This is Professor Gary Leonard, and this is English A10, Literature and Film for Our Time, Visions and Revisions. It's a study of important novels, stories, poems, and films from 20th and 21st century. But why read books? Why watch movies? Or even if we do, why study them? After all, Oscar Wilde, who wrote The Picture of Dorian Gray, wrote in the preface to the novel, All Art is Useless. Well, if he thought so, that pretty much settles it, right? But only if we see being useful as the only kind of value. A character in the novel also says, nowadays we know the price of everything and the value of nothing. Everything is deemed worthy according to its price or its apparent usefulness for what it does for us or how well it distracts us or flatters us or promises to rescue us. From this perspective, great art is useless. But in the sense that it invites us to think about who we are, how we feel, rather than distracting us, it actually refuses to be useful. So that when we engage in a work of art, we are engaging in a part of ourselves very important, but very difficult to reach. Books, said Franz Kafka, are the ax we use to chop through the frozen surface of the sea within us. In our world today, where everything is price, where everything is judged according to function, how are we to access that part of our experience that is merely our living, thinking, feeling, presence in this, our life. Wisdom, William Blake, the poet says, is sold in the desolate marketplace where nobody comes to buy. William Wordsworth echoes this when he states, the world is too much with us, late and soon getting and spending. We lay waste to our powers. Little we see in nature that is ours. We turn from our understanding nature as our source to seeing it as a resource, harvesting it, processing it, decimating it for mere gain that further cuts us off from who we are. The modern age is much like the Wizard of Oz, a massive thundering juggernaut telling us how all seeing and powerful it is, telling us what to do and promising to protect us from whatever it is that scared us, giving us whatever it is we want, if we would but do its bidding. Dorothy will risk everything to bring back the broomstick of the Wicked Witch of the East, as the wizard demands, so he will send her home, but he can do nothing for her. His empty promise only delays her realization that only she can find her way home. No one can do it for her, although lots of people will say they can for a price. As T.S. Eliot says, the end of all our journey be to return to from where we began and know it for the first time. And so it is for Dorothy. A tornado blows her from her home in Kansas. She has all her adventures in Oz. And at the end is back in Kansas, where she was in the beginning. And yet, everything has changed. The Kansas she returns to is not the Kansas she left, because she is not the Dorothy who was whisked away by the tornado. Her adventures changed her, and now she knows herself and her home in a way she did not know before, and never would have known had the tornado not come upon her. If great art can be an axe to chop through the frozen sea within us, it can also be a tornado sweeping us away from what we thought we knew, only to return us to it, to see it in a way we never have before, to see ourselves and others as we never have before. And so we study great art. It whisks us away, bewilders us, frustrates us, challenges us, disappoints us, chops through old ways of thinking to uncover an ocean in ourselves that we never suspected teaches us that what we most need, we already have, if we could but find the wisdom to know it. There is something comforting about following rules, doing what we are told, as Dorothy does, for much of her journey, listening to everyone but herself, tell her what is profitable and what is not. But who are these wizards? Who are the wizards in your life? Your GPA, promising to deliver you to the career of your dreams? Do your wizards really have your best interests at heart? When Toto pulls back the curtain to reveal a little old man maneuvering the levers of the great and powerful Oz, the great con artist makes one final attempt to fool her by shouting into the microphone, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Great art, like Toto, pulls back a curtain we did not even know was there, though perhaps we have wondered from time to time. The challenge for the artist now, Samuel Beckett said, is to present the chaos for what it is and not pretend it's something else. In the Matrix, Morpheus says to Neo, what is it you want to know? And Neo replies, what is the Matrix? And then Morpheus offers two pills, one red, one blue. Take the blue one, he said, and wake up in your head tomorrow. Everything just the same. Or take the red one and see just how far down the rabbit hole goes. 
So you make your choice. ENG A10, take it, don't take it. Don't take it, and wake up and go to your other class. Everything the same. Or take it, ride the whirlwind, pick up the ax, see just how far down the rabbit hole really goes.